Have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? Have you guys seen this? So, Gary V was on Steve O's podcast talking about random shit he speaks about. There's two episodes actually. It's really funny. One episode with Gary V on Steve Steve O's podcast has got crazy amount of downvotes. For some reason, Steve O's audience doesn't like Gary V. They kind of annoyed that he just speaks about himself. They kind of don't buy. He's a businessman. So the downvotes are crazy. 1.7 thousand downvotes um, to 795 upvotes. But then if you go on Gary V's channel, everybody liked the interview for some reason. So they, he didn't really get any downvotes really um, to that kind of level. So interesting, the different sort of audiences because they did two podcasts, one on obviously Steve O's channel and one on Gary V's channel. Anyway, on this particular clip, they mentioned shadow banning and I thought this was pretty nice of him to say or pretty refreshing for Gary Vee to say because nowadays stand-up comedians use the whole shadow banning thing as a new way of talking about counterculture because none of them are really saying anything noteworthy to get cancelled so the next best thing to act like the establishment is against you is to talk about shadow banning shadow banning shadow banning shadow banning is the reason why all these people you know one example obviously that comes to mind is brendan shawby loves talking about how he's been shadow banned as a reason why you know maybe the the clips that they put out or the comedy specials or the podcast whatever aren't getting abused that they should be getting is because there's this secret cabal of you know um really mysterious people behind the scenes at social media companies who are shadow banning them and preventing their work from being seen by the masses so let's click um and play the video and hear what guys he has to say about shadow banning and how dumb that whole narrative is yeah but there's some shit you give a fuck about something music yeah. something yeah and by the way this is so fucking meta you and your crew that wasn't monetizable 20 years earlier it's true it's very true you guys became famous and rich doing shit that you couldn't become famous and rich for 20 years earlier than when you did it mm -hmm. and they had to get somebody to say yes the internet is like, yo, I'm here, I'm open for business, what do you want? Now the problem is the internet is also fair, meaning when people are like, Gary, I'm fucking shadow banned on social media, I'm not doing well. I'm like, bro, you're not shadow banned, you just suck. <laughs> <laughs> like everyone's always got an excuse like yo yeah. fucking Instagram yeah, but do you think shadow ban's a real thing no. though? No. So you th no. you think shadow ban doesn't exist? It's real exist. for 1% of 1%. It's not real for the guy who's been posting the same shit for 20 weeks and nobody gives a fuck and he's like I'm shadow banned. I'm like you're not shadow banned. Nobody thinks you're funny. Yeah. And so <laughs> like, <laughs> and bro on some real And that's entirely true but I'd have to do a bit of a pushback on that because I worked at a social media company, kind of, right? Um, a few of them anyway, one one in particular being Depop. And back when I was working there, they had a mechanism behind the scenes or in admin, on the admin platform, where if you could basically shadow people, shadow ban people by preventing them from appearing on the discovery page of the Depop app. So that exists on most social media platforms in the back end. There is an option where they can kind of make sure that you don't appear as a recommended profile to fucking follow on the discovery app. They can make sure when you search your name on the search bar, you don't come up as an automatic kind of like, you know, suggestion when you just write three letters, you have to write the person's entire username, then press enter and then search through and then find them. Those things do exist because they want to sometimes, if you don't want to ban people and you want to make sure your, you know, your user base numbers are still up you want to basically fool investors into thinking you do have a vibrant community you don't want to ban people you can shadow ban them and you can basically still have them noted down as a user on your platform so people do that all the time but as Gary Vee said in in most cases that is a very small minority of people who are maybe like you know the ones who maybe cause the most hassle on the platform they may be sending loads of messages they're spamming they may be posting offensive things that's why those mechanisms exist but for most of us out there who are maybe experiencing a bit of a dip in terms of our reach and stuff it has more to do with maybe the platform itself like instagram is a good example instagram for instance they have this thing where like every i don't know couple of months and stuff they change um how re how your content is reached by people and for the most part because instagram's owned by facebook they are basically pushing you to do all your 
content via their paid platform so to do it via facebook ads instagram ads whatever it may be they want you to pay to get your stuff to reach more people so what they will do is that they will on purpose throttle any sort of posts that you put out there that are organic whether it's videos or clips to make you obviously go and do the paid option because that's where they make the most money so those type of things do exist on some platforms where the platform itself will quote unquote change the algorithm to basically make you change the way you do your content to adapt to adjust or to basically pay for their paid service for you to get your stuff seen more places it happens with twitter twitter at the moment x where basically if you sign up to the um the premium account and you get a check mark it basically allows you to appear kind of you know to get preferential treatment in the replies so if you reply to a hit tweet your reply will come up sooner if you post something it'll probably get seen by more people they do that more often so those things do exist but the idea that comedians especially people like brendan shaw people on that sort of level are being shadow banned by social media platforms to prevent them from spreading what from spreading instagram pictures of them taking their kid to play baseball from spreading Instagram pictures of another expensive car he bought or some fancy trainers or some food truck interview on something. It's not that deep. Like none of these guys, with the exception of maybe one or two, say anything that would be noteworthy enough to get the attention of a social media platform to have them be shadow banned in the first place. None of them. They don't say anything. That's the funny thing about the whole when they were all doing the whole council culture thing, especially someone like a Whitney Cummings, but Crasher was always paranoid about council culture. Obviously, Joe Rogan was talking about it. None of these guys really say anything. Even Joe Rogan's a good example. Ever since he signed with Spotify, Joe's been really sensible about what he says and what he doesn't say. Even guests on the show he doesn't actually allow any tom dick and harry to appear on his show anymore he's quite strict with who he allows on his show he's even more strict who he allows you know to perform at his comedy club but he's very strict about what he says and what he doesn't say and that oftentimes on his show he'll edit stuff and you'll see little jump cuts on his fucking podcast so clearly these guys are aware that getting cancelled especially at their sort of level especially at their age isn't good for business so they'd much rather not so this idea that they all are you know they all are basically frightened of being cancelled or they're frightened that they're being shadow banned it's really a grift it's really a larp it's not it's really more of a grift to get more attention and the hopes that people will write about you so that you can get more clicks and views on what you do if you keep talking about side can people being cancelled being cancelled people might get more attention so it's like the matt rife you know thing matt rife at the moment is basically doing that he's basically trying to lean into the whole cancelling thing in order to get more attention and hope that can kind of maybe you know change the trajectory of his career and stuff whether or not it plays out for him will it will remain to be seen but it is incredibly incredibly redacted that these comedians especially someone like a brendan is so hell-bent on leaning into the whole i've been shadow banned thing as opposed to what the truth is the truth is most likely your content just isn't that great or especially in brendan's case he's most likely the person who is paying the price for buying followers and engagement early on because in the beginning, because I know, again, I used to do a lot of, you know, my basically experience in work is mostly around marketing and community management and social media management. I've done it for basically five plus years. And I know in the beginning, or maybe a few years ago, sorry, it was a lot easier to buy Instagram followers and build like a profile on Instagram via buying followers and engagement and stuff nowadays those tools and stuff don't really work because there's a lot of other tools that people use to basically check and verify if your account does have um somewhat of an organic you know fan base if if people are there have been botted or not people can find out pretty easily nowadays if people can find out even without apps they can find out just by looking at your fucking engagement looking at your followers looking at the comments you get amount of likes you get and they can quickly ascertain if your you know post or your account is basically been botted or not so think about it in a logical way if you go out and you buy a ton of fake followers but then you post something on your account and those fake followers don't actually exist they're actually just bots then of course you're not going to get the engagement you think you should be getting based on your follower account because you know you don't really have those real amount of followers so i think if anything brendan most likely is paying for obviously having piss poor content it's not that interesting but more so he's paying the price for all those years ago for whatever reason he had this you know determination to be like a one million follower account 
I don't know why he was so obsessed with it because I don't think followers really matter. It's same with YouTube, really. Subscribers don't really matter either. There's channels with like 1,000 subscribers that get hundreds of thousands of views. It's always mostly about engagement and shit. But for some reason, Brendan was obsessed with this idea of like getting a million followers. He got the million followers, but now he's got an account on Instagram that's basically dead for the most part. He doesn't get any engagement that you would, you know, would make sense for somebody with the amount of followers that he gets. And if anything as well, even though, you know, he's a bit of a divisive figure, he's got no reason to have a million followers in the first place, right? Why should he have a million followers, really? He doesn't need to have him now. Like, maybe the funny thing is, exactly, exactly, exactly. I was just about to say that, Young Old Vibes. Just about to say that myself. Big up, Young Old Vibes. Maybe the funny thing about Brendan is that if he would have just waited and been a bit patient, he might have got to a thousand, sorry, he might have got to a million followers organically. It's pretty, it's not, it's not, it's not outside of reason. It's not crazy to imagine a reality where if he was just a bit patient and he did exactly the same things he's doing now, he, you know, he went through all the controversies, everything that happened around him, he could have maybe got to a million followers organically if he just would have did it the, the organic way and not bought any followers. But because he was impatient, he bought them really early on. I'm going to say he bought them maybe five years ago or something, right? That kind of million count. Now he's paying the price for it because nowadays, obviously, you know, the algorithm and everything around reach and stuff on Instagram has changed. And nowadays you don't really get much, you know, action for organic posts anyway. Plus you've already got an account that's bought it and got dead followers on there that don't exist. Um, they're not real people. You post that content, it doesn't reach anybody. It probably gets, you know, not recommended to a certain account. And there you go. Bob's your uncle, Granny's your aunt. So, you know, he's paying the price for that as opposed to being shadow banned. So I'm glad to hear Gary V clarify that. I'm glad to hear him clarify that quickly on that also um no, let's move on i don't really give you a fuck about that i'm not gonna talk about that 